Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Wicomico County Council meeting uh, being held by the council members via Zoom. Um, I'd like to start with the opening prayer by Councilman Bill McCain and then the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Joe Holloway. If we can pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, Councilman McCain. Councilman Joe Holloway with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Holloway. All right, this time I'd like to take a roll call of our council members. Again, I'm Larry Dodd, Council President. John Cannon, Vice President. Here. John uh, Ernie Davis, District 1. Ernie Davis, District 1. Okay, I've been told that Councilman Davis may have some computer problems with the internet. Um, Councilman uh, Nicole Ackley, District 2. Here. Councilman Josh Hastings, District 4. Here. Councilman Joe Holloway, District 5. Here. Councilman Bill McCain at large. Here. County Council staff, uh, Wayne Strasburg, Director of Administration. <laughs> Wayne Strasburg, Director of Administration. Moving on, Frank McKenzie, Department of Planning, Zoning, and Community De Development. I'm here. Thank you. Tyler Walston, Department of Planning, Zoning, and Community De Development. Here. Thank you. Michelle Bradley, Director of Local Management Board. Here. Thank you. And some guests, Jared Parks, Lower Shore Land Trust. Here. All right, and for individuals that are participating, please identify yourselves when speaking to the public so everyone knows who is talking. At this time, I'd like to thank everyone. I'd like to thank everyone again for their patience as we go through changing the structure of our council meetings. As previously mentioned at the last council meeting, a majority of council members decided that we would move forward with doing video conferencing by Zoom during the coronavirus pandemic. The public cannot attend the meetings in person, but it can be viewed in real time on local public access channel PAC14 and on the internet at www.pac14.org via live streaming and on YouTube. The public may listen to the meeting by telephone by calling the number shown on the agenda and entering the meeting ID number. After the meeting, it will be replayed on PAC 14, YouTube, and the county's website. All right, at this time, I'd like a motion for um, someone to approve the consent agenda, and I need a second. So moved. All right, who, who made the uh, motion? I did, I think Joe. Joe, okay, I heard Joe Holloway at the same time. Joe Holloway, uh, do I have a second? I'll second it, Bill McCain. Bill McCain, thank you very much. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor by roll call. Ernie Davis. Nicole Ackley. Aye. Josh Hastings. Aye. Joe Holloway. Aye. Uh, John Cannon. Aye. Bill McCain. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So we have six, six ayes. All right, the consent agenda passes unanimously. Ms. Hurley. You're muted. Ms. Hurley. Ms. Hurley, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I think I can hear you. <laughs> Okay. Good morning, Council President, Council Members, and ladies and gentlemen that are participating remotely. Um, before um, we begin, at the request of the Council President, Resolution Number 23-2020, 
is being removed from today's agenda. Um, the first item on the agenda is the veto of legislative bill number 2020-02 and the charter provision for council's reconsideration, which is um, section 411D. Legislative bill 2020-02 to extend the moratorium on the issuance of building permits for agricultural storage tank that will store dissolved air flotation, also referred to as DAP. <coughs> Wash down water from a rendering, rendering process was introduced on March the 17th. Council then held a public hearing and adopted the bill on April the 7th. The legislation was then presented to the county executive on April the 8th, for which he has 21 days to return the bill to the county council for his approval or veto. The bill was returned to the council office on April the 13th with the executive's veto. Per Charter Section 411D, upon veto, the county executive shall provide in writing a statement of the reasons for the veto. The veto message shall be entered in the journal of the county council and not later than at its next legislative session day, the county council may reconsider the bill. If upon reconsideration, at least five members of the county council vote in the affirmative, the bill shall be law. The council office has not received a written veto message explaining the reasons for the veto, but we do have the cover sheet with the executive signature vetoing the bill. Um, a copy of the bill as adopted on April the 7th is in the briefing material for your discussion today. Okay, at this time I need a motion and a second for legislative bill 2020-02. Do I have a motion? Councilman Hastings, motion. I have a motion by Councilman Hastings. I need a, a second for this motion. Second, John Cannon. I have a second by John Cannon. Any discussion? With that said, we'll do a roll call. Ernie Davis. Nicole Ackley. Aye. Josh Hastings. Aye. Joe Holloway. Aye. John Cannon. Aye. Bill McCain. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So we have six ayes. So uh, legislative bill 2020-02 passes. Next on the agenda is gonna be resolution number 24-2020. This is to authorize the county to acquire easement on 114.37 acres more or less within the Quantico Creek Rural Legacy area from Cherry Walk Farm, LLC. The property is located on the southerly side of Cherry Walk Road and is designated tax map 35. This parcels number 26 and 75. We have Mr. Frank McKenzie from the Department of Planning and Zoning and Community Development on the video conference as well as, well as um, Jared Parks from the Lower Shore Land Trust. Okay, at this time I need a motion for resolution 24-20 and a second. So, so moved move by Bill McCain. I have a motion by Bill McCain. Who's the second? I'll second. Second that motion, Joe Holloway. You got a second by John, uh, Joe Holloway. Any discussion? All right, with no discussion, we'll move through the roll call. Ernie Davis. Nicole Ackley. Aye. Josh Hastings. Attention from being connected to the project. Uh, can you restate that? I didn't hear you. I need to abstain uh, from abstain project, okay. but my organization is. I understand. Joe Holloway. Aye. aye. Got an aye by Joe Holloway. John Cannon. Aye. John Cannon votes aye. Bill McCain. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So we have five ayes and one abstention. And legislative bill uh, resolution 24-20 passes. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. Yes, Harley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, that is all I have at this time. Thank you. Moving on to uh, Mr. Taylor, the council attorney. Uh, good morning, Robert Taylor, Council Attorney. We have one item, it's for introduction, Legislative Bill 2020-03. It, it is an act to provide in Chapter 37 
entitled Ethics Law is amended to comply with the Maryland Code. Um, and as explained in the material in the briefing book, what it's doing is it's conforming to the requirements of the state code, uh, which were changed, I think, a year ago, uh, but we had a, a grace period uh, to come into compliance, and, and that's what it does. There are several changes in the uh, ethics law. I can go through them now if you want me to, or um, I can uh, defer on doing that. What does the council think? Does anyone want to discuss this or have Mr. Taylor discuss that? Okay, doesn't sound like President it. Dodd, I have, I have a question. Okay, Ms. Ackley. Do, do we need to um, submit uh, new financial disclosure because of the change in the ethics law? I believe we still have to do that every year. Yeah, uh, if I can respond to that, I, I don't believe yeah. that this, I don't think this requires you to file new financial statements now. Okay. Um, so it doesn't, uh, it, uh, it doesn't do that. I, I would suggest if you don't want me to go through the changes, I would suggest you read through it because obviously they pertain to people on the council. Okay. Any Thank other you. Well, I, yeah, I have a quick question. Bill. Now that Ms. Ackley asked that question, uh, but I know I just received, I guess it was a week or two ago, so I was supposed to update that. But do I need to update that or not? Uh, I, I haven't seen what you received, but I mean, at least in terms of this legislation, I don't believe that changes anything in terms of your statements that you've submitted. Um, now, you know, as I say, go through and read it. And if you want me to look at something specific uh, that you've received, if you send it to me, I'll look at it. Yeah. Well, I guess my question is just, do we have to do it every year? Um, I actually haven't read through the um, law with that in mind, but my understanding is, yes, you do. Okay. I, I, I thought you had said we didn't. So you're saying we do. No, what, what I'm saying is this doesn't change the reporting requirements. It has other okay. changes in it, but not. it doesn't require that you do anything special just because you're passing this ordinance or will pass it at the next meeting, I assume. Right. So if you haven't filed yet, you still have to file it. But if you have filed, you don't have to do it a second time. Yeah, that's, that's correct. I mean, it, it doesn't specifically change filing requirements. It does have other changes in it, though, that pertain to broadly to your um, to your ethics law. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor by roll call. Ernie Davis. Nicole Ackley. Aye. Josh Hastings. Aye. John Cannon. Aye. Joe Holloway. Aye. Bill McCain. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Legislative Bill 2020-03 has uh, passed. Um, the public hearing will be, well, it hasn't passed, but we're moving on to the next public hearing on May 19th at 10 a.m. Is that correct, Ms. Hurley? Ms. Hurley? She stepped out of the room. Okay. I believe that is correct. Um, all right, at this time, we'll move on to um, public comments. Um, but we need okay. Ms. Hurley to read these public um, comments. Her and I were going to take turns, and she was okay. going to start. But since she stepped away, I guess I'll start. Thank you, Lee. Uh, OK, so the first one is from William Wallace. And he says, um, I am a resident of Wicomico County. I would like to express offense at Council Member Holloway's dismissive response to Executive Director Ashley Teagle of Wicomico Public Library and the value of her professional input on a capital project for her organization. Someone's talking. Um, all right, <laughs> let me pick up where I was. Okay. As Council Member Cannon salently pointed out at the same April 7th meeting, it is common practice to consult with an organization's leadership, for example, Board of Education and Sheriff's Department regarding their input on the capital projects and expansions related to their organizations. 
Why then would Councilman Holloway so derisively disregard the practical critiques offered by Ms. Teagle? What's more, I take particular umbrage with the use of the phrase, quote, throw a monkey wrench, end quote, when referring to a black woman's director, Teagle, who council member Holloway has met on more than one occasion and should know to consider his words more carefully when referring to her, again, professional recommendations and critiques as the leader of the organization at issue before this official body. Thank you for your consideration. can hear yeah. you. I can hear you. Rings busy constantly. How are people supposed to recertify each week? Has the county administration received the estimate on the tax revenue shortfall projected due to COVID-19? And how will the county adjust staff slash operations? The CARES Act has a provision that prohibits evictions for 120 days from the date of signature. This means sometimes in August, landlords will start demand letters and evictions. What can the county do to assist landlords to mitigate their losses and keep people in their rental homes slash apartments? The homeless situation was dire prior to COVID-19. With a probable recession coming, landlords can't expect the same rents if people aren't working. Unemployment doesn't cover basic necessities. SU Beacon Center projects, based on conference call this week, a 30% decline in retail sales for this area post COVID-19. It's probably too soon to tell, but what if SU experiences a drop in attendance at 30%? What is the economic ripple effect, and how can the county prepare business owners for this and assist with ed education or other mitigation options? Ms. Sand, do you have another one? We, we have several public comments. We're going to just alternate with them. Okay. Next um, is from Randy Morris. He says, I reside in Salisbury, Wicomico County, Maryland. I am part of a Facebook group named Wicomico County for Second Amendment Sanctuary, which is a group of over 1,800 concerned citizens. Maryland's last legislative session spawned 18 horrendous anti-gun bills targeting the civil rights of law-abiding citizens. Many would have become felons overnight if most of those bills had passed. One did pass, which had already caused confusion and is up for legal battle. During this pandemic, our president recognized gun stores and gun ranges as being essential as the Second Amendment is a core civil right and necessary to self-defense and the common defense. Our governor recognized our president's list of essential businesses and activities. As a result, those same legislators that spawned those bills against our rights sent a letter to the governor and to the press in an attempt to persuade the governors to reverse his executive order and deny law-abiding citizens their rights. At a time when our economy is so fragile that the fear of another economic depression looms, while convicts are being released, many are out of work, the fear of having to defend oneself and family has grown. I find that those that want to deprive citizens their right to, to be very horrifying. <clears throat> those same legislators are promising that the next legislative session will be far worse in attacks on the rights of the law abiding citizens. Our sheriff submitted to the county a second amendment sanctuary resolution draft that by now should be available for your review. I am urging the county council to show their support for the Constitution and the Bill of Rights contained therein. I am urging the County Council to show the citizens of Wicomico County that the Council backs our citizens and our Sheriff. I am urging the County Council to adopt a Second Amendment Sanctuary Resolution 
as a form of reassurance and protection to the citizens and law enforcement of Wicomico County, as well as sending a message to Annapolis. Cecil, Harford, Cal Calvert, Carroll, and Allegan Allegheny counties have adopted such resolutions. Other counties are reviewing such resolutions, such as St. Mary's, Washington, and Caroline. Two A sanctuary resolutions are being urged by other surrounding counties as well. There is an online petition for a Wicomico County 2A sanctuary resolution, which has over 1,800 signatures, which I will attempt to attach. It is also available at www.change.org backslash Wicomico County Council, or I'm sorry, Wicomico County, Maryland for Second Amendment Sanctuary, signed Randy Morris. The next public comment is from Norman Bennett of Mardella Springs, Wacomico County. I am writing you today with great concern. This great concern is not only with the current pandemic, but with a continued onslaught against our civil rights. Since 2013, there has been a continued onslaught against our civil rights, mainly our right to keep and bear arms. This onslaught has been perpetuated by extremists in our state and federal legislators, whom are backed by extremist organizations that push for extreme gun control under the guise of common sense gun safety legislation. There is no common sense in the reasoning or in their vision, version of gun safety. They target law-abiding citizens while relaxing penalties against criminals. Now they have even called for the release of criminals um, prematurely because of this pandemic. As a veteran, I fought for our rights as well as others abroad. I took an oath, oath to uphold the Constitution. I continue to uphold that oath by writing you today. With this current pandemic, we have seen new gun owners at a rate never seen before. Firearm dealers and firearm educators are busier than ever before. Our citizens are facing great concerns, which are a pandemic, convicts being released, and immediately reoffending. A crippled economy and people's second home more than ever before with the fear of a home invasion. The extremist solution is to shut down gun shops so that law-abiding citizens cannot defend themselves. Thankfully, our governor ignored them for now. These same extremists have vowed to make next legislation session even more vital towards our rights. I'm urging you to pass a Second Amendment resolution to show Annapolis and D.C. that Wacomico County backs their citizens' rights and backs our sheriff and law enforcement upholding the Constitution. Thank you for your time and hearing my concerns. And the next one is from Bill Chambers, the president and CEO of Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. He says, good afternoon. It is imperative that the airport resolutions on finishing the city water line to the Salisbury Airport and a discussion on such be taken up at the April 21st, 2020 council meeting. Does anyone understand the long-term damage that our county will face if we are forced to return the state grant dollars? The council process of pointing fingers and not governing has to stop. There needs to be real leadership on this issue, a project that should have sailed through as our neighboring jurisdictions seem to have no trouble getting public works projects with state money built. A project that has already begun and a project where over $300,000 has already been spent. The Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce and our 700 member businesses and organizations are watching. Next is a comment from Mike Dunn, President, CEO of the Greater Salisbury Committee. On behalf of the combined 100 plus businesses and individuals that make up the Greater Salisbury Committee, we are calling on Council President Larry Dodd to put this matter on the upcoming April 21st County Council agenda to do whatever is necessary to schedule and hold a public hearing, likely a virtual public hearing on this matter, to convene the needed official work session on this matter and to move this matter forward. If that involves getting the project engineers back on the council table to answer council, council's questions, then let's make that happen. To not bring this matter forward after it was tabled at the last meeting of the council two weeks ago is irresponsible. It no longer matters how this project became mired in endless delays. The GSC has been closely watching this project for the better part of a year 
And we are fully aware that there has been much more rancor, much back and forth, and much political blastmanship throughout. None of that matters now. What matters now is moving this airport water project forward without useless delay. In, this un in these unsettling times, the last thing we need is to be the county that had to give up the state of Maryland, to give the state of Maryland its money back because we couldn't get a project off the ground. Okay. Um, and the next one is from Greg Padham, the executive director of Tri-County Council. Um, and he says, dear Wicomico County Council, as the Lower Shores EDA's EDA designated economic development district, parentheses EDD, Tri-County Council serves as the facilitator of the region's comprehensive economic development strategy report, parentheses CEDS for purposes of reporting economic development administration of the US Department of Commerce. The CEDS is the result of input from the Tri-County Council CEDS committee, a body composed of more than 50 stakeholders from all three lower shore counties and which included elected officials, economic and workforce development professionals, chambers of commerce, industry trade groups and representatives of higher education. The Tri-County Council is currently in the process of its annual months long update of the CEDS, whereby it reevaluates the existing goals and concomitant strategies and either affirms, revises, or removes one or more of them. During its most recent meeting in February of this year, the 2021 CEDS committed or excuse me, committee identified or reaffirmed a number of infrastructure projects deemed critical to the economic resilience and development of the lower shore. Foremost among these projects, is the extension of the water main to the regional airport, ref referencing the existing 2020 Tri-County Council CEDS report, the committee was clear in emphasizing the importance of the water main extension to the following aspects of the CEDS. Number one, economic resilience, with its focus on a broad-based diversification of the economy as a critical factor in the ability to the lower shore to avoid, withstand, or recover from major economic shocks to the economy. Um, goal number one, healthy economy, which stresses the importance of helping resident businesses increase their competitiveness while attracting new industry sectors through a strategy, among others of supporting economic clustering as a feeder for diversification and job creation. And then number three is goal two, competitive workforce, which seeks among other things to ensure job seekers have access to apprenticeships and other training opportunities necessary for existing and emerging industries. Number four is goal three, infrastructure which identifies a stable and expanding infrastructure as necessary to economic diversification and growth with water and sewer expansion and upgrade being of critical importance. In evaluating lower shore infrastructure projects of the CEDS committee consistently emphasize the importance of diversification of the economy, a function of economic resilience as part of a strategy for long-term stability. A common theme which emerged was the notion that economic resilience is more comprehensively achieved by providing an environment which supports both new and emerging sectors, as well as existing and traditional sectors of the economy. During the deliberative process, the CEDS committee voiced the opinion that assets such as the airport and any subsequently subsequent projects designed to leverage those assets were consistent with the broader notion of promoting and supporting both emerging and traditional economic sectors as they di diversify the base of the economy. As a facilitator of the process, I feel confident in stating the extension of the water line to the airport does indeed represent a direct leveraging of existing significant assets as discussed by the CEDS committee in February 2020, as well as in 2019 when the current CEDS report was drafted and submitted to EDA. In contrast to other regional assets, the size and scale of the economic impact to the lower shore of a robust regional airport 
would be profound and far-reaching and would impact a divide and div I'm sorry, impact a, divi a diverse and wide range of economic sectors. The Salisbury Airport 2019 economic forecast and the Maryland Aviation Administration's economic impact of airports, Wicomico Regional Airport from December of 2018 provides the detail supporting this statement and are, I believe, consistent with the Tri-County Council's CED's committee evaluations. Further opportunity for leveraging exists in the area of funding. The Lower Shores designation as an EDD through the Tri-County Council presents the possibility of applying for competitive infrastructure grants from the EBA and up to 50% costs of projects falling with the category of critical infrastructure, such as water, as well as projects which enhance workforce development and manufacturing supply chains. For these reasons, the Tri-County Council supports the Ocean City, Salisbury, Wicomico Regional Airport Water Main Extension Project. If you have any questions or need clarification regarding this matter, please do not hesitate to contact me. Sincerely, Greg Padham, the Executive Director of Tri-County Council. The next public comment is from Eric Jones, who is the President of the Kilburnie Estates Homeowners Association. As a Wacomico County resident and current serving president of the Kilburnie Estates Homeowners Association, I wanted to reach out in regards to the Wacomico County Resolutions 20-2020 and 21-2020. Members of the community I represent have voiced their concerns of the annexation of the water main proposed along the western border of our community on Walson Switch Road. I do not speak for all in the community, but I prou proudly call this place home, and I would like to voice my concerns about possible repercussions that the water extension may have today and years from now. I feel the best place to voice these concerns and ask questions would be a public hearing on this matter. I am formally requesting a public hearing or town hall meeting on this infrastructure improvement before the matter is voted upon, approved, and constructed. I understand that due to the current state of society that this public forum cannot happen now, but I look forward to attending a public setting and discussing the matter in person. Please feel free to reach out and contact me anytime. Sincerely, Eric Jones. <clears throat> okay, and the next one is from Joan Wharton, a District 2 resident. Um, it starts out. I am writing as a constituent who lives in District 2 of Wicomico County and would like to express a very validated concern as well as try to get some answers with regard to the below mentioned matter. My husband and I are athletes and very active people who love the outdoors. We have this love for athletics and the outdoors in our five-year-old son. With all of the restrictions being mandated on us since the COVID-19 pandemic, one thing that is helping us muscle through this as a small business owner being severely impacted by the economy closing and as parents who are homeschooling our son for three to five hours a day while trying to keep our business afloat at this time is running, riding our bikes and hiking on our local trails. Running, cycling and hiking outdoors is what, give, is, what is giving joy and peace during this extremely difficult time. As a mother who is trying to keep her child happy and somewhat shielded from what is happening around us, I am doing everything I can to get him outdoors where he is the happiest and the healthiest. This past Friday afternoon, I took my child to Cedar Hill, knowing that the trail there was not closed, barricaded, or roped off like all of the other trails in the county. We were the only two in the entire park marina and had a wonderful hike full of smiles, nature lessons, and laughter. It made my heart happy to know that he was happy and enjoyed the hike. As we were approaching my car smiling and laughing, I see a Wacomico County Recreation and Parks park ranger pull up next to my car. As I approached the park ranger, he told me in front of my child that it was forbidden to hike on all county trails, including the one we had just hiked. My son was extremely upset and while in the car asked me why hiking on trails was against the law. I was very upset and aggravated, to say the least, about how the situation was handled in front of my child and the fact that trails are closed. 
I would like to ask why, why Comico County has decided to close all of their trails, forbidding their own citizens, taxpayers to utilize these trails. Many of us are trying to get through this extremely difficult time by exercising, getting some vitamin D and enjoying the beauty of our great outdoors. My family and I refuse to sit in our house like caged birds. Give us the benefit of the doubt to have enough intellect to social distance, wash our hands and do what is best for our families and our community. I do know that our surrounding counties have some of their trails open. So I have been taking my son on weekly field trips to get him out and active. I have attached an excerpt from Governor Hogan's order which does allow for hiking, biking, and running as long as social distancing is man maintained. Watching my son in tears driving by our local playground in Centennial Village because he can't even step foot on the park that he grew up in or go on hikes because it is forbidden in our county is truly making me as a mother, a business owner, a community volunteer, and law-abiding citizen extremely upset and I have had enough. I know that others in the community feel the same way. My family and I are asking Wicomico County to open all county trails back up for the mental and physical well-being of its citizens. Thank you, Mrs. Ackley, for taking the time to hear my concerns. And should you need to reach me, feel free to call me. Thank you again, Joan Wharton. Our last public comment is from Jessica Peters, Walson Switch Road in Wicomico County. Good morning, council members. As a property owner that would one day be negatively impacted by the proposed airport water pre-annexation agreement, I am requesting you to please vote no should it come up again. None of the properties between the water tower and the airport should be forced into being part of the city. Not today, not tomorrow, not next year, not 7,300 or 10,950 days from now, not ever. There must be other options and we the people deserve to know what they are and why they are not being presented or pursued. I want you all to know we see what you're doing and we don't like it. This now almost commonplace practice of pushing things through with absolute minimum public input and discussion is really getting old and regularly cast many of you as underhanded and sneaky. Trying to trying to slide that pre-annexation vote through during the last meeting with no allowed public presence or real-time comments was really a new low, though, and felt almost dire, I say, criminal. Watching local government leaders from my home where I legally demanded to be exploit a worldwide pandemic to follow their personal agenda or that of friends and colleagues with both disheartening and disgusting. This must stop. Please do better. And that is all the public comments we have today. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Sanders, Ms. Sanders and uh, Ms. Hurley. Ms. Hurley, you stepped away from the desk a minute ago and I wanted to ask you about the um, public hearing for Legislative Bill 2020-03. Would that be held May 19th at 10 a.m.? I'm sorry, I could hardly hear you. Okay, um, let me make sure that I'm not on mute. I am not on mute. Can you hear me now? That's, that's a little better, yes. Okay, I was asking you before you stepped away from your desk a little while ago when we were discussing Legislative Bill 2020-03, are we gonna have the public hearing uh, on May 19th at 10 a.m.? That is correct, yes. Okay, thank you, I wanted to clarify that. Okay, moving on to council comments. Council comments, what I would do, well, I'll call by roll call to make sure, and if you don't have any comments, just say nay. Uh, Ernie Davis. Nicole Ackley. Nicole Ackley. Josh Hastings. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I was muted. Okay. Nicole Ackley, do you have any council comments? I do. Um, I'd like to thank the community for writing in and sharing their concerns. I think we all have um, the same end goal of um, water at the airport and working towards that and trying to get a public hearing to address the citizens' concerns is at the top of my agenda. Um, I'd also, I would like to, I'd like to comment uh, in regards to the um, 
the, the note submitted by Mr. Wallace. And I'd like to it was Councilman Holloway's intention to insult uh, with the phrase to throw a monkey wrench. Um, the phrase can be found in just about every dictionary, either referencing to an actual type of wrench itself or a disruption, as I believe um, Councilman Holloway was intended. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Ernie Davis, are you online? Josh Hastings. Yeah, I'll just want to say briefly, uh, you know, with uh, on the COVID-19 situation, obviously it's a really tough um, situation. We're, for Comica, we're about to, likely tomorrow, we'll have 200 cases confirmed. Um, we'll probably hit that mark likely tomorrow where we're going. I know a lot of folks have reached out on what does this mean for budget impacts and they'd like to know more information as far as is this going to hurt why comic goes schools or jobs in the future of the county um i do agree that maybe that's something that we want to continue to try to um help get out information as we hear it uh, or uh get it out to the public uh we'll also say that the um you know this is a we had one comment on opening the trails this is something that uh, this is going county by county for, you know, parks, maybe for uh, recreation areas or slides or other kind of uh, children's um, area where we're confined together. That is uh, um, something that should be closed and we should not be, um, you know, together in these kind of spaces. But when it comes to hiking or biking, a lot of the other counties around us and across the state have uh, kept open their uh, um, other place where you're actually separated from others. And that might be something that Wacomico might want to can consider uh, as we can, especially as we continue to open back up. Uh, last thing I'll say, of course, is uh, thank you to the frontline workers and the essential workers. I know a lot of folks are out there, I mean, what PRMCs in my district, a lot of folks are, um, you know, are, are facing a, a struggle every day that's, uh, that's kind of scary. It's, it's pretty scary. Um, oh, and I'll just to say, uh, happy uh, 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Um, people on the planet, that's what's most important. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hastings. Joe Holloway. Yes, um, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to reply to uh, Mr. Wallace's letter. Um, if I offended anyone by that statement, I do apologize. However, I would like to say, um, if Mr. Wallace would like to talk about this with me, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I'd be glad to talk to him. If he knew much about my life and my um, my past, he would know that I'm very sensitive to uh, uh, any kind of a uh, statement that would um, insult anyone as far as a rape slur. That was not intended. Um, so I'd be glad to discuss that with him. And like I say again, I apologize if it offended anybody. That wasn't my intent. On the uh, Kilburnie issue, you know, it's been a... Um, busy couple of weeks with the folks that live in that area. We've had um, a lot of folks call, a lot, a lot of questions. Apparently there's a lot of questions that could be answered maybe by the uh, county executive's office or um, somebody from the airport commission if we'd have a public meeting. But nobody seems to think we need to have a public meeting. They want to do it on the computer. And as we could see today, we've had one council person that couldn't attend because uh, he was having internet problems. So that's not really a fair way to have a public meeting. I, I don't really agree with these meetings. Like we're having them, it doesn't give the people a chance to engage as they should be able to, but it's, I guess we can call it better than nothing at the time. You know, there's about 250 homes that's in Kilburnie, there are homes up in Walston Switch Road. Um, these folks would like a voice before this, um, before this was voted on. There's um, been some phone calls and some emails made by folks promoting this project, but they don't live in that neighborhood. And they need, you know, you got to listen to the folks you represent. I had, a, I had a phone call yesterday from a gentleman that lived on the other side of the county and asking me why I was, you know, why this was being held up. And I explained to him, I gave him some of the facts and some of the things we knew about. And, you know, we'd asked 
asked for public hearings. We'd asked for another work session. We didn't get that. When I explained to him the ins and outs of it, he understood and he thanked me for what we were doing. So until we can get this public hearing arranged, and I mean a public hearing, not a Zoom, not a Zoom hearing, and get the facts out there, I don't think we should move forward on it. The other, the other point is, Parsonsburg Volunteer Fire Department has served that area well for a number of years, and I think they would like to have a voice in this, in this also. And I have heard from them, so um, I'd like to keep this tabled until we can um, arrange a public hearing. Thank you. Everybody, stay safe. Prime times. My wife has a governor for uh, has a message for our governor. I would like to say she wants the beauty shops open. <laughs> so I told her to. <laughs> so anyway, everybody, take care. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Vice President Cannon. Vice President Cannon. All right, I'll come back to him. Um, Councilman Kane, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I, I could have. Oh, okay. Okay, he's on. Go ahead, uh, Don. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Larry. Um, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Joe, and, and I've always appreciated the value of the public's input. I've always said that. Um, uh, but my concern is the time restrictions that we're under with the projects at the airport, because uh, I have great reservations about the fact that the pre-annexation, the waterline resolutions uh, weren't on the council's agenda today. Uh, my opinion is when you don't allow these agenda, these resolutions to come to the table, uh, you don't allow the benefit of the uh, citizens nor the seven members of this council to even discuss these issues politically. We could have spent a lot of time today discussing these issues and most likely answering a lot of the questions that uh, the public has. I've tried to answer whatever I could, whatever I can to every email I get. Um, I do more than just saying thank you for your your concerns and you know uh, you know email the council with whatever concerns you might have in addition to this. I try to um, review the facts and to explain to these individuals what my perception is of of the true facts of the of the case um, so many so often i think uh, members of the community rightfully don't understand all the circumstances and that's what our responsibility is as a council is to make sure that we email them back or we call them or we hold council meetings whereas in a work session we can explain to the public exactly what is being done I think that's the best way to address their concerns uh, and um, to, to educate them as well. Uh, public hearings, which is what's been requested, um, not everyone in the public realizes that when the council holds public hearings, it's not an exchange of information. It's not answering their questions. It's just listening to them you know, talk about what their concerns might be. Uh, we're getting those same results through emails. We're getting the same results through, uh, through the public, public comments we've had uh, during the um, during these uh, virtual meetings. So again, um, I think the fact that maybe a town hall had not been held months ago, that's probably something that would have helped to resolve those issues, but we're past that now. We can only work with, uh, with, with what we have. And I would say that it's incumbent upon the council members to try to resolve those issues uh, by calling or, or, or emailing these individuals who have their concerns um, and I would say that the council itself maybe should send a letter out saying what the pros and cons are, as well as the executive branch. You know, the state of Maryland is investing $4 million in this project, and the federal government is investing another $18 million in the airport. So I'd have to say, why would it be that the county council in Wicomico County would go to great lengths to try to hold these measures up? So... Uh, creating such delays, I think, as of now, is is incomprehensible, and I I would definitely want to see these resolutions back on the table uh, by our next meeting. Uh, give the give the public a chance to hear from us as to what the issues are and and what the uh, misperceptions might be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Uh, Mr. McCain. Yeah, I have a few comments. Uh, first of all. I do want to start off thanking our first responders and our health care providers and all the other volunteers that are helping us get through COVID-19. Uh, I want to particularly thank uh, Peninsula Regional Medical Center and the health system. Under their leadership, we were 
very well prepared for this. Uh, they have uh, reacted extremely well and provided us the best protection we could ever imagine. So, uh, you know, I want to thank them. Uh, I do want to address the airport issue. Uh, actually, Mr. Cannon, uh, I mean, your comments were very well said. I mean, I, I really agree with everything you stated. Uh, there's, there's a few other points I would like to make. I mean, I was very disappointed that this is not on today's agenda. Uh, I mean, it should have been. Uh, you know, this is the future of our airport. And this, is for, this isn't just about Wicomico County. This is about the entire region. Uh, this very well might be the most important economic development project that our region has experienced in, in decades. And it's actually at this point a fairly straightforward project. I mean, the airport cannot continue to operate into the future without potable water and a public water source. And the uh, current situation at the uh, not moving this forward puts a lot of things at risk, including our existing airline carrier. I mean, without potable water, it puts their continuation in jeopardy. It eliminates any possibilities of expansion of new businesses uh, without the public water. So, and, th and this is a project that's taken years to get to this point. In fact, in 2016, you know, this is when it was studied as to the best way to provide water to the airport. I mean, everything was investigated from, from wells to bring it from a public source. And it was determined at, determined at that time the most cost efficient and effective means to bring water and provide water to the airport was via the city of Salisbury's water system. They had the capacity and the willingness to do that. And you know, this is a access denied line. So this line is only to provide water to the airport. This is the only thing that's servicing uh, this line. It's, it's only purpose is to provide airport to the uh, water to the airport. And that was approved back in 2016 by the council. And that's what started the process. And then it's taken all these years to get us to this point because they had to do the planning, they had to do the engineering, they had to do the contract bidding, they had to do easement acquisitions, and that's all been done. And now here we are, and now we, you know, all we have in front of us is the operating agreements and the pre-annexation agreement, which is part of the requirement. And this was discussed back in January. And actually, I'll quote our uh, former public works director that presented to, this to us back in January. He started his comments off when he was when he was presenting by saying this is a very routine agreement which it is uh you know because in essence we build it and the city manages the water and at the end of the day you know that you know that's really all we're talking about and the uh you know there is no i just want to make it very clear to some of the concerns that are being expressed there is no annexation nothing's being annexed the water line is a denied access line. It's only to provide water to the airport. And the city can, cannot annex you. People, you know, you know, I know they keep expressing the concern about being annexed. The city can't annex you. You have to petition to be annexed. So, but annexation is not part of the conversation. Unfortunately, the, the part of the agreement is termed pre-annexation. That's just a legal requirement that the city has to do because they don't do urban service agreements anymore. And anytime they provide water outside of their municipality, there has to be an agreement. And that's really all this is. And you know, you've heard from you know that uh, the support from Tri County Council, because as I said earlier, this is a regional issue. You know, our lower shore counties are depending on us to make this happen. And uh, you know, we've heard from the Chamber of Commerce, you know, which represents all our businesses throughout our, our region, the Greater Salisbury Committee, which represents, you know, 100 business leaders. You know, we got, you know, private citizens. I mean, everyone realizes the importance of our airport. So we need to move forward. And just one last thing, we also need to realize, you know, the construction was supposed to begin in February and a 90-day extension had to be put in place. That extension expires May the 12th. And May 12th, the contractors contracted, it's up. And that's already an extension. 
So, you know, you know time is of the essence. Uh, we need to get this on the agenda. You know, I just can't stress the importance of that enough. And one last thing, you know, we are hearing from the public. You know, as Mr. Cannon said, you know, resolutions, you know, we do not have public hearings on resolutions. But we get comments all the time, and all those comments go to all the council members. So we're hearing from you know the people that are expressing their concerns and so forth. We're hearing those comments. We're trying to get back to them. You know, hopefully some of these comments uh, in our public comments today will help clarify some of these issues. So you know, we are hearing from everyone, and that's all being taken into consideration. We appreciate their their concerns. So uh, that's all I have to say on the airport. One quick last thing. Uh, even though schools are not in session, it's acceptance time. A lot of our uh, students are receiving offers to their college choices. And I actually want to recognize a few that I, I'm aware of that have uh, received a couple of very noteworthy uh, 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 scholarships. Uh, I know Alex Sewell from Bennett has been given a full scholarship to the Maryland Honors Program. And I know that. Uh, Patrick and Brian Sieberjar from uh, Bennett High School, they're twins. They've both been accepted to Yale. And there's many other noteworthy ones. Uh, you know, please share those with me because I'd like to give, give them a little face time. So I want to congratulate them. Is that it? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. McCain. All right, um, <clears throat> I, I appreciate everyone's comments and all the comments that were um, Red, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, there are a lot of concerns and a lot of discrepancies on a lot of the comments. One thing that was met, wasn't mentioned, or several things that wasn't mentioned, is we do not have an airport manager available. We don't have a public works director. We don't have a professional engineer. We don't have a finance director. We don't have a county attorney. We don't have an assistant director of administration. And our current director of administration will be resigning or retiring soon. He already put in his resignation letter. So this isn't a, uh, an open work session on this, so I'm not going to go any further. But I do thank all the citizens that have contacted me. Every day, um, somebody's even bringing up something that we missed uh, for a reason not to move forward with this project. But I appreciate everybody's concern. And thank you for calling in or um, sending us emails. Um, thank you to all the frontline workers. Thank you to the nurses, doctors, EMS. A lot of people don't realize that they have to wear these um, PPE gowns over and over again all week long. Um, not too long ago when I was <clears throat> riding the ambulance, <clears throat> excuse me, in fire trucks every day, we'd put on our uh, personal protective equipment and we'd just use it one time, take it off, dispose of it and use another one. But now there are shortages of these masks and these gowns, so it's very difficult. So they're going to have to try to clean them after every use and put them back on. Um, so God bless all of them that are out there working for us. So thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> at this time, I'd like uh, to adjourn from legislative session and to go into open work sessions, followed by a closed work session by video conference to protect the attorney-client privilege pursuant to general provisions of Article 3-305-B7. All in favor by roll call. Ernie Davis. Nicole Ackley. Aye. Josh Hastings. Aye. Joe Holloway. Aye. John Cannon. Aye. Bill McCain. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, so now we'll move into open work session. Larry? Uh, did I yes. Could uh, Hello? I suggest like a five minute break? They may need to change the tape. Or Has it been that long already? Okay, let's take a, a five minute break. Pack 14 has said they're fine. Um, Joe, do you need to take a break? <laughs> we, we can no, I'm fine. Okay, thank you very much. All right, moving on. Ms. Hurley? So the next. The First open work session is a forest conservation easement relocation at 6405 Rocka Walken Road, Salisbury, Maryland. And we have uh, Mr. Tyler Walston with the Wacomico County Department of Planning and Zoning on the video conference with us. Mr. Walton. Good morning. Uh, thank you for, uh, for hearing these requests. I know both of these applicants are eager to get moving on these projects. And also want to thank you for uh, giving me a reason to get dressed up today. <laughs> so a few times. Uh, I'm going to try and go through these uh, as quick as possible. 
um, and just let me know if you have any questions when I'm going through. <clears throat> um, so the first one on the agenda is for 6405 Rockawalkin Road. The property owner is Roland J. Powell. Uh, the applicant uh, surveyor that's been representing Mr. Powell is Parker and Associates. Size of the property is 2.15 acres. The applicant is requesting the applicant requests 0.39 acres of the easement be moved to an offsite. The mitigation is going offsite. The owner must relocate at a two to one ratio. Uh, the owner has agreed to cover all expenses related to preparation, review, and recordation of this project. Plans submitted to this office for the proposed relocation meet all current FCA requirements. Uh, because of this, staff recommends approval of this project since FCA requirements uh, will be satisfied in the mitigation bank. Okay, Ms. Harley. Are there any questions? Any? I mean, does council have any um, questions about this? Mr. Walsh, I have a question. Sure. When Ms. Ackley. Okay. Like They're relocating this. Are they, is there a specific type of tree they need to use to, re, to relocate? You're, you're breaking up a bit there. I think the question is, is there a specific tree that they have to use to relocate? Um, according to FCA regulations, they have to be Maryland native trees. Um, there are a number of private mitigation banks that uh, are available in the county. Um, they haven't provided which bank they're going to go into. I would imagine they're going to use Parker and Associates. They have a number of banks that they um, provide to their customers. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Okay, what's next, Ms. Harley? Okay, the next work session item is a forest conservation easement relocation on Song Sparrow Circle, which is located in Delmar, Maryland, and Mr. Walston will go over that forest relocation request as well. Okay. All uh, right, the property owner is Heron Ponds Expansion LLC, care of Doug Marshall, uh, located on Song Sparrow Circle. The size of the property is 13.45 acres. Uh, the applicant is requesting permission to relocate the forest conservation easement that is located on the property. Currently, the site has an area of 7.31 acres in an SDA easement. The applicant requests that 0.34 of the easement be relocated on site. Since they're relocating on site, the owner must relocate at a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, the owner has agreed to cover all expenses related to preparation review and recordation of this project. Plans submitted to this office for proposed relocation meet all current FCA requirements. Staff recommends approval. Okay, any comments, any questions? One more time, any comments, any questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Walston. Thank you. You guys stay safe. Thank President you. President Dodd. Yes. Um, the next step on both of those forest relocation easements is to have a public hearing. Um, and we can have that public hearing on May the 19th um, at 10 a.m. At May 19th, 10 a.m., same time. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, um, Ms. Hurley, on this closed work session, can you explain to council what we are supposed to do from this point? R right, so what we'll do is end the open session. Um, the motion um, was made and approved um, to go into closed session so the public could hear that motion. Um, so what we'll do is end the public portion of the meeting and council members will have to use the second Zoom link that I emailed out to everyone um, this morning to rejoin the meeting. Okay, so at this time we'll take a five minute break to um, close out of this Zoom conference and then open the new one. Does everybody agree? Everybody understand? Okay, moving on, thank you.